Now what I do say is that I will additionally account for the spatial occupancy. So I'm saying that I'm here. Somebody here in my motion direction, I'll be absolutely very cautious of. Here, I'll not be cautious of. Here, I'll not be cautious of. Back, I do not care. So, if you look at this thing, this models a sphere. At a distance of D, no matter where you go, it models a circle. It has exactly the same value. Now, that's a problem that Q has a X and a Y axis. And if I need to model this DQ, O function along with that D, if web, it's three-dimensional, x value, y value, and f web. And how can I show it? I can show it as contours. So let's plot it as contours. That's my x. That's my y. This is where my agent is currently at. And this is f web as contours. If you want to understand it a bit more mathematically, so let's write down Q and O are both circles. So I say the Q comma O is the distance between the two circles. So that's QX minus OX, the whole square plus qy minus oy the whole square and let's forget about the sizes of now point sized so if you plot f rep as a contour against this qx qy qx qy you get circles now what i want to do is i want to say that i care about somebody at the front a lot more <laughs> that I care about somebody aside. So that's a vehicle which is at one meters in my driving direction. And I'm very cautious of it. On the other hand, I'm equally cautious of the same vehicle at just half a meter. And equally cautious at half a meter. And behind, I do not care. So let's say here, behind, I do not care care so the contour value should come out so let's plot the same x y so let me modify the contour this is the position of the vehicle now instead of circles i should get what is one meter ahead that's how you plot contour is half a meter at both the side and it's zero meter behind oops did it just become a heart it wasn't intentional so, these are the type of contours that I would like. And this is my current direction. Intended motion. So let me not take it a non-zero and plot this thing up again. That's what I initially want. So something that's where I'm driving, something which is one meter here, it's just half a meter here, it's just half a meter here, and that's how it goes. And this is my current direction of intended motion. Uh, so let's model that up. So my F repulsion now is of course the old thing. However, now I will give it, uh, if this angle is large, if this angle is zero, then I will let it be as it is. And if this angle becomes 180 degree, then I'll put it zero. If this angle becomes 90, I'll reduce it up a little bit half. And that's exactly the same in the both direction. 
So now is where the modeling trick comes into being. You say that positive and negative does not matter. Positive 30 is the same penalty as negative 30. Positive 60 is the same penalty as negative 60. So of course you need to take a cos. So cos positive negative doesn't matter. Let's say this is a phi zero. And this is the xy for which I'm calculating this repulsion force. Okay, so I take in a cost because positive negative doesn't matter. Now one thing which is I mean which I have to do in 180 degree I need to put it as zero. So exactly back it should be zero. So cos of pi it becomes minus one. And because cos of pi becomes minus 1, so minus 1 plus 1 will become 0. Uh, cos of 0 now is unfortunately a problem because cos of 0 will be, I mean 0 I said no penalty will be applied. What's currently happening, cos of 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 becomes a 2. I need 1. It should not amplify, it should diminish. So in any case, it would have been controlled by this constant. So that's my new modeling. And the only thing that I need to tell you what is phi 0. So that's phi zero. This is where I want to actually travel. Normally I travel towards the goal. Now why do we take goal? Because your instantaneous direction keeps on changing, but your direction of intended travel is always towards the goal. You always intend to travel towards the goal. So I take it as the direction to goal, where of course that's a goal. And I mean doing it for an obstacle over here. So you see it's, if it would have been in the direction, no penalty would have applied. It's a little bit oriented, so I'll apply some penalty. And this is what is phi zero. Well, of course, this is QX, QI, this is OX, OY, and you can do in the mathematics, which is like around over here. What you actually need to do is that you're taking the cos phi is the dot product of these two vectors times the magnitude of this, magnitude of this, that's a unit vector, so it's all the zero. So, vector mathematics. So what is this vector? This vector is O minus Q. What is this vector? So dot product is this dot this is magnitude of this into magnitude of this times cos of the angle between them. Magnitude of this is all the one. So let me just do a, a magnitude of this. So that's the definition of cos product. So you get the cos phi straight away and you can put it around over here. And you'll get it. Now, a little caveat again that I'll not be speaking about much per se. Sometimes people like things which are symmetric. So the force that Q1 applies on Q2 is exactly the same as the force that Q2 applies on Q1 with a negative 1. But because of this term, so far everything was symmetric. K was symmetric, D was symmetric, distance between Q and O will be the same as distance between O and Q. Uh, Q minus O is same as O minus Q with this negative sign and DQO. Everything was symmetric. Now because of this cross term, the symmetry is broken. Because this E term is no longer symmetric. It's only a function of Q. It's not a function of O. And some mathematicians hate it. So a model that is intermediate between some mathematicians who hate this lack of symmetry
So if I want symmetry, I'll just let it be as it is. If I don't want symmetry, I'll apply a cos phi 0 plus 1 by 2. And if I need to be intermediate, I can just say lambda 1 minus lambda, where lambda is between the two groups. One says half symmetry and the other one says symmetry doesn't matter. This angular spatial variability that you have taken into account is absolutely wonderfully more valuable. And because it's absolutely wonderfully more valuable, that's exactly what we should be doing. So in general, just summarizing, you have a total experienced by any robot is the submission over all people's attraction force and repulsion force. So if the distance is large, there will be attraction. If the distance is small, there will be repulsion. Plus, for all the static obstacles, there is only repulsion. Uh, you don't feel anything for the static obstacle. You just don't. And this can, of course, be broken into intergroup and intragroup attraction and the repulsion forces as well. As well as you will have uh, attraction force towards the ultimate goal that you have. The attraction force that drives you towards the ultimate coordinate, which is your goal coordinate that you have. Uh, sometimes people just say that they can be multiple goals as well. And that's not completely correct, but sometimes what people say is that there could be multiple attraction. And by attraction, it's the same thing. You're going into a shopping mall, you see McDonald's and suddenly you're like, do I go here? Do I go here? You're a bit attracted towards it. So you move a little, then you realize my belly is going fat and then you walk, keep walking towards the goal. Sometimes you see a new girl and you are like, okay, do I just say hi, hello and you are a bit attracted and then you say, okay, there are people watching me. Let me go straight. Sometimes you want see a new store open and you just want to try that out you feel a bit attraction and then you look at your pocket it doesn't have money it looks like expensive store and you just walk by so those are some little attraction that deviate your attention and those are also important to simulate for exactly the same reason and the reason is that if you believe people do not get attracted here and there, then it's a wrong simulation because no, or not everybody is traveling straight. You do have little attraction. So, summarizing overall, we looked into multiple social scenarios and the mantra behind every social scenario was the fact that people will attract and repel each other and the attraction and repulsion that people have between each other is a function of the groups that they take and that's exactly what the lab exercises are going to be. Whatever I said, you just need to simulate that up. Two groups, one group, three groups, group with loners, groups with different types of people. And you don't model the people as just any other obstacle and everybody going nicely towards their each other. You model the dynamics as well. And because you model the dynamics, you simulate the group staying intact, all the groups staying intact. That doesn't mean that they are indivisible. Sometimes it's, it's mandatory to divide a group. It becomes too large. And that's another interesting aspect. So you may have too many people, all your friends going around and you're too 
many in number, so could be one of the simulation problems. And there's one person who wants to cut you, that's absolutely okay. There is where you understand the friendship levels. You see, people will leave each other if they still have a doubt on each other. So it's identifying the weak links. In such group splits, always the weakest link is the one that gets split because the attraction is not that magnitude. And when subjected to an external person like this, the links are the first to break. Unlike two people very close to each other, which is very difficult to break, both of them become, I mean, they see an external agent coming and their affection even increases. So, in this part, all that we did was that we got this group feeling and different groups attracting and repelling each other in different senses. Like, another way that this problem could be merged is that you are going here as a group. However, there is a table kept over here. Now you have to split. And that's exactly what I'll ask you to do in the lab, which is to find out how does the, do the groups first split and then they assemble back because otherwise it's not possible. So all of them feel a constant attraction force and because all of them feel a constant attraction force, they're all going in the same direction by the attraction and repulsion. But these people over here, ultimately they will also feel repulsion as they go near, the repulsion will either reach F max by exponential modeling or it will reach infinity by the 1 upon the cube modeling and then they have to stop and then what happens is exactly what my question is going to be to you people to verify by experiments that what really happens. Now, so here what we did was that we had this groups which were one collected entity and each member of a group got attracted to each other by varying degrees, repelled on getting too close by varying degrees. That was a function of the mutual interaction between the two people. Every person in the group still looks at two, three close people. So if I have to, it's still reactive. If I need to make a navigation decision for still, I'll just look at the neighbors and the side. It's not that I'm going to go very far off. But only by looking at the neighbors, I will be able to find out based on affinity, how do I attract or repel. Now, here is where I don't tell you what happened. So it's not AI where I give you a sample output. That's exactly what you need to construct. It's simulation. I say these are the groups, strong attraction, weak attraction. Intergroup forces could be different for different groups. So I'll say model a group of friends, very small close attraction, a group of faculty, weaker attraction, a very strong bonded family, very strong attraction, just senior and juniors going around weak attraction. Just model it up. This is where they are going and see the interaction. See how does the density change with time, see how does the walking speed change with time, see how does the flow of people change with time, see how much time does it take for them to get in, get out, just see that. Is there a correct answer? No. But all I want to study by this exercises is how people behave and can we get in the normally observed behaviors just by simulating these entities in the natural format in this manner. And if we can do that, we will have in pretty interesting exercises, simulations where we'll only make decisions using the AI primitive. A person decides based only on its neighbors, but overall we'll see what Interesting things come in, people fighting with each other and groups breaking and all the wonderful little things. And once we do all these simulations, then we study, okay, how interesting, how good or how amazing the facility that we are operating it is. 
And towards the end, let's we started off with a spring, so let's model this thing as a spring as well. So the same exercise, they are group of close friends with each other and all neighbors are connected to each other with a spring. A uh, spring you'll have to be a little bit careful because a spring technically breaks on exceeding the maximum tension. So the springs and the springs have a dynamic structure. So the springs have a dynamic structure. So if some adversary gets around over here, this spring after some tension will actually break. It's different from some of the exercises that we have done in the past wherein the exercise was this is the spring a pyramidal structure or something and that should never break so some obstacles or something will come in the middle however towards the end all of them should be kept with this structure intact so, I mean, you are friends, you basically an uh, unorganized spring. The structure can change multiple times. You are following someone, something happened, you start following someone else. If you attack military day parade, your spring structure is fixed. That absolutely never changes. People have fixed structure to each other, and that's what's the formation control. So, you, ha you are given a formation, and you should always stick to that formation, never deviating from that formation no matter what people break in go pass by because of some reason you need to split you should again form in exactly the same group and stay and the formation of that should be constant so here if you take spring as a graph it's ad hoc you always make new connections with the neighbors and people far off with the connections will break and here the graph remains constant and only the forces the magnitude of it changes with time so I'll end it up in this note with a hope that during the labs we do lots of interesting simulations on lots of interesting stories with lots of interesting entities doing some amazing things and narrating an interesting story that we can simulate it up and see for ourselves that though those how close do those stories actually imitate everything that happens in all the shopping malls in the city and everything that we look around in this institute can we simulate that up and see the chaos in a simulated sense that will be all for the day thank you for uh, elongated listening